In the 1960s, Martin Luther King sparked the civil rights movement in the United States. I was committed to what Luther King was doing, so I decided we'd do something to hear about it, because this was a de facto segregation of city. In those years, it was rampant. It was wide. You couldn't, you couldn't move one way without you face racism. Yes, brother. We would, we would look down on the simple term. Yeah. We'd look down on, you know, as nobody. Black people couldn't get a proper job in Bristol here because of racial prejudice. We used to call it color bar. I decided that I would go for drawing attention to racism, taking on the Bristol Bus Company because it was the most powerful employer in the, in the city at that time. I mean, you come to look at it this way, when all beating drops is at, there ain't going to be enough work for the whites, let alone the blacks. we got enough for our job now to get a working wage. If we don't get our bit of overtime, we can't live. If they come down here, they'll work all hours God give them. They were just saying, we don't, even though all blacks don't have them, we don't have them. We should be all be out of work if they start coming on, they'll start ruling the country for a long, won't they? What would you think about coloured people coming to work on the buses? I don't like the idea very much. Why not? I wouldn't like to work with them at night. There was no law against racial discrimination. No, you, you weren't protected by laws. There weren't any. Well, I think the majority of them are just ignorant. This is and always has been a white man's country. Therefore, I'm sick of the arrogant attitude of coloured people in this country. There's a problem of unemployment at present, and if coloured people are employed on public transport, I will walk before I use them. So when I began the campaign, I asked Guy Bailey if I could use him to open up the debate and see if I can get him a job on the buses. He said he would. And so I set up an interview with the, with the management. Personally, I couldn't see it working out. It might, but it does, it does in other towns, but I don't think it would in Bristol, because I think the racial feeling is worse here than in, than in the other town. Having already spoken to the director um, of the bus company to say, we got some, have you got any vacancies? He said, we've got plenty. So bring Guy Bailey out, we should be very happy. He didn't know we were two black people. Okay. okay. And so guy Kate went in. Mr. Bailey is here but he's a black. He's black. He's a black man. And I could hear also that the, 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 the person in the other rooms saying tell him that the vacancy is filled. The point is that whilst we can obtain white labor in this city we intend to go on engaging white labor rather than colored labor. Predictably he was told he can't, he can't get the job. He don't take colored. So I called him I learned the, the technique of a boycott, the boycott that Luther King and Jesse Jackson were doing was the boycott I was going to bring to Britain. Don't use it. Don't use that facility. Leave it alone. The bus boycott brought together blacks and whites in a fight against racism. The protest became part of a much wider movement. First time a prime minister in this country has actually supported a black-led campaign against racism. That's when Harold Wilson invited me down to Downing Street and told me there and then that if he gets to become prime minister, he, the first thing he would do in the first parliament was to put down a law say that racial discrimination was wrong. I am not prepared to stand aside and see this country engulfed by the racial conflict which calculating orators of ignorant prejudice can create. The battle against racialism here in Britain knows no boundaries and no limits. That is why I reject the attitude of those who with the lips, not the votes, preach racialism at home. It had to change, and it did. On the day President Kennedy gave his backing to the American Civil Rights Movement, the Bristol Omnibus Company finally lifted its colour bar. They wanted us to win. They wanted it to happen. 
and it, and it happened. Having no reason, having acted in time, which we have, I believe, why we shouldn't overcome these very challenging, very important problems, which are important to us and indeed to the whole the world.